Good morning, everybody. Good Pastor morning. Pastor Travis and Dr. Priscilla here, and we want to say thank you so much for being here, right here at City Church Live, the very first Sunday Amen. of 2024, and I'm looking forward to this year. So am I. This is so exciting, and we're glad to have you here. Yes. Well, kintsugi is the Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces back together with gold. The result uh, is something that is considered if that something is worthless, it becomes then priceless, just like you. And this practice is not unique only to the Japanese. Instead, it started in the Garden of Eden. And today, Dr. Foster is going to kick off our 10-week series entitled Kingdom Kintsugi, as we discover how God repairs us with gold. Yeah, right on. I am really excited about this new year and this new sermon series we're kicking off today. And if you guys are excited about it, I'd encourage you to make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and also click that share button so that your friends and family can see what's happening right here at City Church and they can jump in and be a part as well and be a part of this whole ride that we're doing in this new sermon series. But we're about to start service in just a couple minutes. So if you wouldn't mind making sure you've got everything you need, got your Bible, notebook, coffee, whatever it is, and let's get ready to worship the Lord. We'll be back with you guys at the end of service. God bless. Enjoy the message. tribulations, God, but we're here. God, we're standing here in this moment to praise your name. We're standing here, oh God, with hands lifted, oh God, to praise you, Father. Not for the things that you've done, oh God, but for who you are. God, we say we love you and we give you the glory. Come on, somebody give God the praise again. Praise on. 
Say it again. Say, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. Say, how could I keep it inside? Come on, last time. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. He's alive, y'all. How could I keep it inside? Say, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I command my soul to. Praise the Lord in his place.
gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. One thing I know that God always causes us to triumph in victory. I know we took some losses in 2023. But I, I declare and decree that in 2024, we will see nothing but victories. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you'll see nothing but victories. Come on, y'all ain't looking at your neighbor. Y'all scared of your neighbor? Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to see nothing but victories. Come on, I ordain you right now as a prophet. Come on, prophesy to your neighbor and say, you're going to see nothing but victories. Don't 
victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, the battle belongs to you, Lord. And we will praise you in the midst of the battle. We will praise you in the midst of the storm, God. Come on, all the worshipers, come on, let's praise the Lord right now. Because he's been too good. With open mouths, come on, let's praise the Lord right now. Oh, in the midst of the battle. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to see a victory. Yes, I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, you singing this for your neighbor now. Come on. I'm going to see a victory. And I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Come on, declare it. Victory today is mine. Say, I told Satan. Get thee behind. Get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Come on. Say, joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Come on, y'all sound good. City Church, come on, let's put our hands together and make some noise for King Jesus today. He is worthy of our highest praise. And we're here today. Some of you thought you weren't going to make it through last year. Some of you thought that last year was going to finish you. But God has a story that is yet to be told. Don't you dare put a period where God has placed a comma. Today, we're kicking off a brand new series 
that is simply titled Kingdom Kintsugi. Kingdom Kintsugi. If I could have a little bit more of my mic in the monitor, I would appreciate it. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces back together with gold. The result is something that was worthless becoming something that is priceless. Oh, y'all aren't hearing me today. The, the result is something that was trash becoming treasure. The result is taking something that was completely broken and becoming a blessing. The principle is not unique to Japan. Instead, we're here to suggest at the beginning of 2024 that this started in the Garden of Eden. Man broke the blessings of God into shattered pieces. God did not sweep broken humanity into the dustbin of death, but instead Jesus, the Son of God, chose to repair us. He turned our trash into treasure. He turned our ruin into something beautiful. He turned our waste into wealth. He turned abandonment into art. Jesus took something worthless like me and made it priceless like you. Kingdom Kintsugi takes humility. It requires awareness. It requires vision and understanding of your true value, not based upon what you have done in this life or haven't done, but based upon the completed work of Jesus Christ. Your true value comes from the cross and what Jesus accomplished for all of us. Kingdom Kintsugi requires total dependence upon God. But in the end, God turns brokenness into blessing. Now, if you've been around city for a while, you know our motto <clears throat> is we are, say it together with me, we are imperfect people, loving imperfect people toward a perfect savior. We're imperfect people loving other imperfect people toward a perfect savior. No one here lives under the false presupposition that we are without blemish or without brokenness. Instead, our candid claim is that we surrender our brokenness over to Jesus. We surrender our shatteredness. We surrendered our wreckedness over to Jesus who is repairing us with gold. This vase behind me is a valuable piece of china. It's been on display in our church lobby for years. But much like all throughout the Bible, you don't see a picture of people who are whole and beautiful. Instead, you see pictures of people whose lives were shattered and then repaired by God. The same is true in this room. There are people in this room whose lives, like this piece of china, have been shattered. What used to compose something whole, something beautiful, something valuable, is now shattered and scattered on the floor of foolishness and recklessness, serrated in smithereens of dreams, mangles of pieces of marriages, broken bits of businesses, shattered on the concrete 
of consequences. What used to be valuable is now considered invaluable. What used to be treasure is now viewed upon as trash. The reality is we are all a bouquet of brokenness. Brokenness is par for the human course. Fragmented pieces of what used to be stunning now lays shattered in shame, broken in burden, ridiculed in ruin, and devastated in destruction. When brokenness takes place, there's an overwhelming, deep hopelessness that sets in. In fact, for some of you, seeing that china hit the floor, it was too painful for you. Because it reminded you of something that used to be beautiful that was now broken. It reminded you of something that used to be beautiful and whole, but now was shattered on the concrete of consequence. But we are not people of hopelessness. We are people of hope. We are not irredeemable. We are repairable. See, the lie is that brokenness equals worthlessness. That's the lie. When something is shattered in your life, maybe it was a career, maybe it was your finances, maybe it was your family, maybe it's your health. When something is shattered in your life, the lie from the enemy is that it is hopeless. But I've got a word for you kicking off 2024. I serve a God who repairs people with gold. Just because you're damaged doesn't mean you're done. Just because you're fragmented doesn't mean you're finished. I serve a God who knows how to put you back together with gold and you will be worth more when God puts you back together than you ever were when you were untouched by this world's ways. God is the master at restoring broken things. When God restores something that was broken, it is worth so much more than it was when it was whole. As I studied Kintsugi, <clears throat> there is so much more that God wants to say to you after you've been broken. You see, if you study the life of Jesus, it was only after he broke the bread on the hillside and broke the fish that he blessed it. He didn't bless it before it was broken. Oh. He blessed it after it was broken. There are some people here today that think you can't be blessed because you're broken and that is a lie from the pit of hell. God broke you so he could bless you. He may have allowed the brokenness. He may not have caused it, but he allowed it so that you could be beautifully restored to God. All throughout the Old Testament, we're gonna look at people whose lives were shattered. Over this 10-week series, we're gonna talk about eight different aspects of human brokenness. How we find it all throughout the Bible and how God is piecing us back together. Each week, you'll see a different piece of this shattered vase repaired through Kintsugi. So that by the end of the series, the vase will be whole just like 
God is going to restore some things that you never thought could be fixed. God is going to repair some things that you never thought could be fixed. And he's going to do it with gold. Briefly, I want to take you back to the original shattering. The fall of man occurred <clears throat> sometime after God created a perfect and holy world and put man in it. The fall of man also occurred after the fall of Satan. We find the biblical account of creation <clears throat> and the fall of man in the book of Genesis, chapters one through three. According to the book of Genesis, God spoke everything into existence. He spoke the sky into existence. He spoke the earth and the planets and the celestial beings and the animals and the plants and every living thing except man, he spoke it into being. But with man, God didn't speak it. You were the only thing that was handmade by God. Genesis chapter two, verse seven says that God formed man from the clay of the earth. You were the first pottery that was ever made. Humanity was pottery that God created. Look at Isaiah chapter 64, verse number eight. It says, and yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are formed by your hand. After God formed us, he breathed eternal breath into us. That breath, ruach, is the Hebrew. It, it literally means he gave us his spirit. His eternal spirit lives in each of you. He gave us his spirit. Hey, I'm all for setting some good goals for your health in 2024. Yeah, you need to be in the gym. You need to be looking at your financial health. But the best thing you can do is to sow into your spirit, to sow into your soul, because those things are eternal. He gave man an eternal spirit when he breathed the breath of life into him making us in the very image of God. So God placed Adam in the garden. Now, when you think of garden, you may think of work. You may think of sweat. That's the garden we know now. However, the garden then was ultimate paradise. Unlike anything man has ever experienced. If you wanted to ride a lion, you could just hop on a line and go for a ride. Glory to God. Beautiful, perfect. You could walk with God. Imagine going on. You think you like taking your dog for a walk. That gives you joy. Imagine walking with the God of all creation. Imagine grasping God's hand as he imparts wisdom to you about the earth and everything around you. That was the life of Adam before sin had its way. In these perfect surroundings, God walked and talked with man. Adam enjoyed the perfect creation of God. Because God did not want Adam to be alone, he put him to sleep one day. And he woke up without a rib and with a woman. Come on, somebody. They were to govern the garden together. God told them that they could eat of any fruit in the garden with the exception of one tree. And if they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they would surely die. Genesis 3 also introduced us to another being involved in the fall of man, the serpent, Lucifer, Satan, 
he had already been cast out of heaven because of his rebellion. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan came to Eve as a serpent and suggested to the woman that God did not really forbid the fruit for her, for her good, but rather for his good. Can I just tell you that brokenness is always the goal of Satan? Always. Let me say that again. Brokenness is always the goal of Satan. If Satan is plotting a temptation against your life, it is never to fulfill you, it's only to fool you. Uh, it's, It's never to indulge you, it's always to enslave you. Rebellion against God's word has never resulted in wholeness, only brokenness. So she ate it and she gave some to Adam and he ate it. Genesis 3, 5, at that moment, sin entered God's perfect world. Romans chapter five, verse number 12 says, when Adam sinned, sin entered the whole world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Shatteredness, brokenness, ruin echoed all throughout the universe. Imagine the silence that must have rushed across heaven as holy angels watched their former friend, the fallen angel Lucifer, take a victory lap in arrogant pride over what he had done to God's perfect creation. Silence courses through heaven as Satan's arrogance exudes. Mankind had fallen. Death. Disease. Depression. Darkness. Entered the fabric of humanity and the story of man. God could have disposed of our depravity right then. He could have pressed the celestial alt control delete button on the universe right then. But instead of choosing ruin, God chose restore. Instead of choosing annihilation, God chose restoration. In a move that both shocked heaven and infuriated hell, God did not destroy man, but God chose to restore man. Like Kintsugi, restoration is costly. It's a costly undertaking. In Kintsugi, the repair is made not with mere clay, the composition of the original construction, but it's made with gold, the most priceless metal commodity on the earth. Who uses gold for glue? The Japanese, that's who. So what is the priceless material that God chose to use to glue you and I back together? It was blood. The first blood that was shed on earth was by the hand of God in the Garden of Eden. God slew an animal, and it's my opinion that it was a lamb. He slew an animal and he made some leather clothing for Adam and for Eve to cover their brokenness and their nakedness. God chose to cover them, not to condemn them. Some people erroneously believe that Adam and Eve were put out of the Garden of Eden as punishment. But I would submit that they were put out of the Garden of Eden for protection, not punishment. Let's look at what the word says. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Then the Lord said, the Lord God said, this is the Trinity right here, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is co-equal and co-eternal. Uh, in other words, God the Father is not greater than God the Son. God the Son is not greater than God the Holy Spirit. They are co-equal and they are co-eternal. Co-eternal meaning they have always, always been. And so here you have a meeting of the Trinity. This was like the first coming to Jesus meeting right here, right in your Bible. Then the Lord God said, look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. And if they reach out and take the fruit of the tree of life and eat it, they will live forever. Now, hold on. Didn't God ultimately want them to live forever? Yes. But if they partook of the tree of life in that cursed state, in that condemned state, in that damned state, they would have been locked into that place for eternity. God did not put them out of the garden as punishment. He put them out of the garden as protection because if they consumed the tree of life, they would have lived in that fallen state forever. Aren't you glad that our God loves us enough to protect us even when it seems it's punishment? Verse 23, so the Lord banished them from the garden of Eden and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord stationed a mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden. And he placed a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. The blood that poured out in the garden that day. It was a symbol not a solution. The blood that poured out in the garden that day, it was a parable, not a prescription. Oh, y'all to help me a little bit. The blood that poured out was representative, not restorative. The blood that poured out was a bridge to Mount Moriah where Jehovah Jireh, would show up on the scene and grab the hand of Abraham to keep it from lowering the knife on his only son and say, I have made a way where you will be free, where you will be set free, where rest restoration will take place. And that lamb that was sacrificed, caught in the thicket on Mount Moriah, was a bridge to another mountain just 300 yards from there called Mount Calvary, where the blood of the Lamb of God would be poured out and that would be the gold that would glue your soul back together, glue your spirit back together, glue your mind back together. That would be the gold that would restore your life. Jesus' blood was slain from the foundation of the world to be the gold that God would use to repair each and every piece of brokenness. You know, there, when you go through a shatteredness like this, you don't get every piece back. The Holy Spirit is saying to you right now, don't you worry about the pieces that you lost. I'm gonna repair it with gold. Don't you worry about, listen, let me take care of the restoration. Let me take you, you just surrender your brokenness to me. You surrender your pain to me. You surrender your hurt to me. You surrender everything that seems to be shattered in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. You surrender it to me and let me take care of the repair. 
You don't need every piece that you lost. It's going to be replaced with gold. The blood is the gold. It is the unexpected glue that turns brokenness into blessing. Ashes into beauty. Weeping into dancing. Over the next 10 weeks, we're gonna unpack the eight ways that human beings are broken through the lens of the Old Testament stories. Each week, you're gonna see a new piece pop up on this vase that's been shattered, broken. You're gonna begin to see how gold fills in the gaps between all the lost and broken pieces and how at the end of the process, it'll be worth far more than it was in the beginning. God says to you, no matter what was broken in 2023, <laughs> he says, you just surrender to me. I am the potter, you are the clay. Let me do some kingdom Kintsugi in your life and repair the broken pieces with gold. Stand to your feet all across this room. Bow your hearts and heads with me right now. I, I would like our prayer partners to come forward and position yourself to receive. Father, thank you for seeing our value beyond our brokenness. Thank you, Lord. We're filling in the gaps of everything that we are not with everything that you are. We surrender our brokenness to the master potter. God, will you heal your people? God, will you restore your people? God, will you renew your people? Let every lie of Satan right now that has been pervasive in the minds of believers, that it's too late, you're too far gone, you can't come to him, you can't be restored. But those lies to diminish by the power of Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come and bring healing to our shatteredness, hope to our hopelessness, beauty to our brokenness. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Can we give the Lord some praise right now? Come on. Hallelujah. We're going to sing a little bit. And Maybe something's been shattered in your life. I, I, want to, I want to dare you. I want to challenge you to join one of our prayer partners up front. None of us are perfect. Remember our motto? We're just imperfect people loving, praying for other imperfect people toward a perfect Savior. But come forward. If something's been broken in your life, surrender it, that brokenness to God, and watch what God can do.
that, God. Say we give you all, say we give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to. worship us.
let them hear you sing it. Say, we give you. Well, welcome back to each and every one of you on this first Sunday in January 2024. It is a blessing that you are here. And today with the new series kicking off of Kingdom Kintsugi, uh, God is in the business. He specializes in mending the broken, repairing and restoring better than before not only just restoring, but uh, being able to make it more valuable. You are more valuable to God. We are all blessed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ that restores us back to God. Thank you for joining us today. If it is your first time joining us here at City Church, uh, then you're in the right place. Uh, if you'd like to get to know us better or uh, more things about our church, you can text the word CITY VIP to the number 94000 and make sure it comes up as City Church in Cordova and you can complete the information there, then submit it and you will uh, be able to receive that information. If also you're joining us, it's your first time, we can let you know that, uh, make sure you press that like button, that subscribe button so that others can join in and you will have the benefit of being able to know when we're online as well. For those who are joining us in your City Church family extended because you've been with us for a while, everyone is family extended and you want to be a part of uh, helping us spread the gospel. We're not just here in Cordova, but all over the world. And here's the beauty of that. You might not be able to go, but you can be a part of, of planting a seed in that. And here's how you can do that. The first way is you can go to your app store, look for the app for City Church in Cordova, and then once you're there, you'll be guided to give securely. Secondly, you can go online to our website. That's citychurch.live, all one word, citychurch.live. Click on the giving tab and follow the instructions. Thirdly, you, you can text the word city to the number 888. 364-4483 and follow the instructions there. And lastly, you can mail a check made out to City Church. Our address is 8200 Macon Road here in Cordova, Tennessee, 38018. On behalf of Dr. Chris Foster and the entire City Church family, we're blessed to have you. Just remember, you are priceless in the hands of God, our creator. Be blessed in your week. Take care. Hey, friends at City Church and Pastor Chris, uh, I'm Joel Marbet, your missionary in the Amazon jungle in Ecuador. And uh, today we have this incredible privilege of uh, having the new girls come into the Ecuador Hope House. You guys have been an integral part of this ministry and we're so thankful. This past year, we just had our largest graduating class ever. And now we're taking in new girls, filling up those spaces. And very, very soon, uh, we're gonna have an entire new group of young ladies who are preparing themselves for life, not only for education, but for life. And, uh, and also, 
At this same time, we're celebrating uh, 20 years of ministry here in the Amazon, and we have an incredible plan to bring over 80 churches together, 80 churches that have been planted in the Amazon jungle. And right now, guess what? We have over 140 Bible school students who are preparing to plant new churches. Our goal is to complete, is continue to press forward and plant. And with your help, we're going to meet our goal.